together. So now what we can do is we can do exactly the same process with this one. We can go and select the truck toll down to the truck growth rate and go create from selection. And the top row's unticked now, so that's good, and left column. Now what you'll see is all those names are, or sorry, all those titles are named, or all those assumptions are named. Okay, so now we're gonna put in expenses. You might be able to see that there's a pattern occurring here. So what we've got, so we've got some general assumptions. Now, if we had some construction assumptions, then we would have put those in, probably in between the general assumptions and the operating assumptions. And then we've got some operating assumptions. So you can sort of see the logical progression. If you look back at the ebook, the key ingredients are assumptions, which we're all we're working on right now. But then also we need to capture the construction if there is a construction phase and also the operations if there's an operating phase. And the next one after this I'll tell you is the financing. So you can see that there's a natural progression here. Now I'm just going to tidy this up. I'm going to format it a tiny bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the expenses. So let's go annual maintenance expense or cost annual management costs annual capex and tax rate now usually the capex would be in obviously a, a capital expenditure rather than an expense running through your income statement we're going to treat this as an expense running through your income statement and also your cash flow statement. So usually what would happen is that CapEx would probably be capitalized and then recognized in your income statement through depreciation over time. But what we're going to do is we're going to directly expense it here. In any case, we're not going to look at the income statement here or the profit and loss statement here. So let's go and let's put these inputs. I'm going to cheat and put in my things there. So also we've got a, let's put in a dollars, thousands. And let's go and put that there. And now let's go and maintenance um, and management so let's go let's spell it that way and capex and tax rate okay so let's put those in so we've got 30 million per annum in maintenance we've got 5 million per annum in management costs and we've got 2.5 million worth of capex okay and we're going to use a 30 percent tax rate here okay so i think we do actually use our income statement here but we're going to treat this annual capex as an expense for the purpose of that income statement so let's go and let's keep going. Let's put in our debt amount. So of the acquisition, we're going to find out a price for this toll road. And of that, we're going to have a proportion of debt that we're going to use to buy it out and also a proportion of equity. So we're going to put in a debt amount, interest rate, term of debt, years, uh, equity, discount rate, and we're going to put in a target debt service coverage ratio. Okay, so now these are all inputs. 
and we've got a debt amount, interest, debt term is years, it could be a number, let's put a number, equity discount rate is a percentage, and target debt service coverage ratio is a ratio. Okay, so let's put in total debt. We don't know the total debt now, so don't worry if you think that we don't have that as an assumption. We're going to highlight it so that we know to come back to it. So we've got total debt, int rate, debt term, equity rate, and target debt service coverage ratio. Okay, so let's put in those, the ones that we do know, 7.5%. I'm going to color that blue. We've got a 10-year debt term. I'm going to color that one blue as well. We've got 13%. And we've got 1.25. Color that one blue as well. So let's name all these cells. So let's go Alt, and we go M for formulas, C for create from selection, and name those, and we'll do exactly the same with this. So Alt, M for formulas, C for create from selection, enter. So all those should be named now. If you haven't done that, just stop the video, take your time and name those cells. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get onto the nitty gritty of the model. So this is where we actually bake the cake. So let's go, let's put in another sheet and let's call it calculations. I'm just going to call this one calculations. And I'm going to change the width. Oh, let's go. Oh. And with 2.5, I'm going to change the view. Don't worry about it. You can leave it in the current view. And I'm going to change that. I'm going to do that same to that one as well. Okay, so let's talk about the calculations now. So let's go and let's firstly put in a year ending. Another critical assumption is that we're going, only going to take this up to 2021. So there's going to be a term of 10 years. So we can put that term in, term or end date. And we can just say this is going to be EO month bracket, select that date, start date, and then go 12 times 10. Now, this is probably not best practice modeling, but we we only need to know that that's the end date. And we'll leave that as an input because we've put some hard-coded numbers in there. Okay, so let's go back to the next one. So I'm using control page down to navigate, but you can simply click on the tab. Now we're going to have a year ending and we're going to have a year counter. Okay, and in cell D, we're going to have, this is going to be a date, and this is going to be a number, right? In cell G, we're going to have equals. Now, what we can start doing is we can start typing our start date. Yeah, so we'll type in our start date. It comes up here, and that's our start date. Now, if it comes out in that format, then if you've got or if you've done our Excel shortcuts tutorial, you can simply push Control Shift D. If not, right click, go into the formats and change your number to a date. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say that that's a red formula because that's going to be a unique formula across this row. And we're going to type in EO month that comma 12. Strictly speaking, that's probably not the best modeling because we've got a 12 in there. We can always put a 12 for the months in the year on the assumptions page. So then if we obviously change our P 
periodicity or something like that, then we could have it fully flexible so it changes here. Once again, change the format of that. Now we're going to go all the way out to December 2021. Now what I'm going to do here as well, I'm going to go control spacebar or just select this row, control shift arrow across, and I'm going to hide these columns. Just make it easier, a bit cleaner. Um, and we're going to name this row. So this is this is a fancy sort of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go fin year here. I'm going to make that red. Now shift space bar or as long as you're pointing to this fin year, you can probably go and select that as well. And we're going to go control left three, alt n for new. No, well you can't do it that way. So let's go shift space bar. Control F3, Alt N for new, and let's go OK. So the Shift Space Bar selects the row, but you've got to be on that cell and push Shift Space Bar, Control F3, Alt N, and then Enter. Okay, so that one's named, so you'll see that in the top left-hand corner. Now we're going to put in a zero there. Once again, that's a unique formula. It's a hard-coded number as well, so we're going to put it in red and we're going to go year counter and we're going to go equals that plus one and then we should have 10 years. Yeah, we've got 10 years. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this cell, shift space bar, control F3, alt N for new and enter. Okay, so there we've got some calculations in. We're going to leave this section now. We're going to call this cash flow summary. And we'll come back to this later. So you can color it in yellow so you know that you've got to come back to it later. We're going to put in some indicators that we're going to use throughout the model. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to put in an inflation index. Then we're going to put in a cars index a trucks index, days in year, and then we're going to put in OK. So we're going to start off, and we're going to start off with these being 100%. So these are, are red figures, or they could be blue as well. Now, we've talked about our inflation before. If you skip back to this page, remember our inflation right here? We're going to put in an inflation index. Now, this is a pretty simple formula because it's just a yearly model. All we're going to do is go equals that times 1 plus inflation. I'll just get that out of the way and let's copy that one all the way across. So you'll notice that it firstly goes up by 2% and then obviously it goes up by a bit more than 2% because we're compounding and so on and so forth. So what we can do is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to show you a quick way to cheat. I'm going to go shift arrow down a couple of times and control D. So this is the car growth index, and it's not going to be the inflation, but it's going to be the car growth rate. So what I just did there is I highlighted that inf, pushed F5, and then a go to box comes up, and then I pushed enter. And then I went to the inf, but now we 